yes, thank you so much for RSVPing. We look forward to seeing you. Okay, bye. Um, hey. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? I am preparing for our tea party. Tea party? Yeah, that's today. Did you forget about it? Today? Mm hmm and it's actually in like a few minutes actually. Um, what are you wearing? I don't know. Did you forget the theme of this tea party? No, but I just need you to remind me what it is. <laughs> it's our PJ theme party. We are PJ? not PJ? Yeah. Okay. Your pajamas. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, are you ready? Because uh, we actually have guests arriving right now. Okay, let's go. Okay, ready? <coughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the tea party. Hey, what's up? We're so excited that you guys got to join us today. Green, do you know that you're talking to stuffed animals? If you need help, play twice. Jordan, we're in quarantine. These are the only friends that we have. Oh, okay, 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 got it. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> so where's the food? You know, Joe, this party has been so much fun. It really has. I've had a blast. But could you imagine what it would be like if you knew that just by being here, you were risking your life? That's crazy. I can't even imagine that. I know, and we're actually going to learn about a dinner party that Queen Esther hosted in today's Bible story. Really? I think she even used dishes like these. But she probably didn't enjoy her party as much as we enjoyed ours. You'll notice in the Bible story that she was very nervous at her party. But God had a plan. That's always true. Yeah, but I actually think we're wearing the wrong hats today. I think we are too. Let's trade these crowns for some party hats. hats. It's our special friend's birthday who lives in a different country. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Benjamin. Hope you have a great day. Bye. But first, everybody, let's stand up and worship. Woo.
Hey, first kids, we are about to dive into the. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a little carried away. I wasn't invited to the tea party. But today we are going to learn about an even bigger banquet with really serious consequences that Queen Esther hosted in her city. Now, remember last week we talked about how Esther was a young orphan Jewish girl that was chosen to be the queen. So now we are going to continue our study. So get out your Bibles and turn to Esther chapter 3. We're going to read Esther 3 verse 5 and 6 and then we're going to read from Esther chapter 4 verse 13 and 14. So be ready to flip between those two passages. But first I have a question for you guys. Have you ever been in a situation that was very difficult but you knew you had to make the right decision. Maybe making the right decision wasn't the easy decision, but you knew that's what you had to do. Well, today we're going to see how Queen Esther was put in a very difficult situation, but she did not hesitate. She knew what she had to do. She was brave and she was courageous and she knew that God was with her. So before we dive in, let me give you just a real quick background of what's going on in between last week's story and this week. So like I said, Queen Esther is now queen. She's been in the palace for a little bit, but King Ahasuerus has hired or obtained a advisor, a person that helped him in the palace, kind of like a right-hand man. This man's name was Haman, or Haman, pronounced either way, and he was the king's advisor. But the problem, boys and girls, was Haman was an evil man. Haman, let's call him Haman. Haman was an evil man. While he presented himself to the king a certain way, he had very, very evil, evil, evil in his heart. For example, one day he was walking through the crowds and Mordecai, remember Esther's guardian, refused to bow to him. Well, Haman had made a decree that everybody should bow to him. He was second in command in the royal household. Mordecai said, nope, not going to happen. Well, this did not make Haman very happy. So let's dive in again. Esther chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, and listen to God's word. So, get to the right page here, my bad. When Haman saw that Mordecai was not bowing or paying him homage, he was filled with rage. And when he learned of Mordecai's ethnic identity, remember, they were Jewish, it seemed repugnant to Haman, big, huge words that means he was not going to be satisfied just with punishing Mordecai. He wanted to destroy all of Mordecai's peoples, the Jews, throughout a hazardous kingdom. Now, here's the thing. Remember, Mordecai is Esther's guardian, so he is going to get word to Esther. And what Esther does next, guys, is so brave and so bold because she knows that she must follow God's plan and purpose for her life. Esther decides to hold a banquet, and at this banquet, Esther reveals that if Haman or Haman is going to destroy the Jewish people, then he would be destroying her too. Well, when King Ahasuerus heard this, he said, absolutely not. And he learned who had ordered that decree, and it was Haman that was destroyed in set. And if you will look, and this is probably one of the most famous passages out of the book of Esther, but chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, when Mordecai told the messenger to reply to Esther, don't think that you will escape the fate of all the Jews just because you were in the king's palace. If you keep silent at this time, relief and de deliverance will come to the Jewish people, but from another place. But you and your father's family that are here will be destroyed. Now, listen to this so carefully, boys and girls. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to your royal position for a time such as this. Guys, Esther was bold and she was brave and she knew that she had to stand up for the Jewish people and she saved the Jewish people by following God's will. 
boys and girls, will you be bold? Will you be brave like Queen Esther was and stand up? Stand up for what is right. Stand up for God's word. Guys, stay fully engaged. Stay fully committed to God's word so that you can follow his path for your life just like Queen Esther did. You may not know why God has you, where he has you right now, but I promise you his plan and his purpose for your life is perfect, whether you understand it right now or not. Now, let's go check out Joel and see who he's going to meet today as he sees what it's like to rescue people today. Today, we're talking about rescuing people. Nobody knows more about rescuing others than firefighters. Since the early 1900s, firefighters have dedicated their lives to putting out dangerous fires, saving lives, and teaching people how to be safe with fire. So cool. Today, we are at the Fire Museum of Memphis to learn about these amazing heroes who gave their lives to rescue others. Learning about firefighters and fire safety educators will help us as we dig into our story from the Book of Esther. Today, our story is all about how God used Esther to rescue his people. I'm Joel, this is Explore the Bible on Location, and I'll see you inside. This is Haman. Boo! Haman is the bad guy of this story. This is Mordecai and this is Esther. Woohoo! They're the good guys in this story. Haman did not like the Jews and wanted to get rid of all of them, but God had other plans. God would use an ordinary man and woman to rescue his people. Alright everybody, I'm really excited. We're here with Educator Kim and Educator Bobo. Thank you guys for letting us visit today. Thank you for visiting. Educator Kim, tell us about the Fire Museum. What do you guys do here at the Fire Museum of Memphis? So I'm an educator with the Memphis Fire Department, Joel, and we work here at the museum. The museum is like our own little schoolhouse where boys and girls come in and we teach them a lot about fire and life safety and how to stay safe in case of an emergency. Educator Bobo, you told me that you used to be a firefighter. How do firefighters rescue people in a fire? So Joel, when we arrive, our first priority is to find out if there's anyone else in the house. Okay, even before we start putting out the fire. So once we find out if there's someone else in the house, that's when we go to work to rescue. And we try to put the fire out while we're rescuing, okay? That's so cool. And you guys come in and you help bring people out yeah. of the fire to save their lives. That's correct. Wow, that's so awesome. Educator Kim, yeah. before you were here at the fire museum, tell us a little bit about what you did. So I was a police officer for five years, Joel. Firefighters and police officers were kind of like first cousins, uh, whereas we show up at all of the family reunions together. If boys and girls ever have to call our emergency phone number, which is 911, usually what's going to happen, the police is going to show up and the firefighter is going to show up. We call ourselves first responders. We show up first to start rescuing and helping boys and girls, moms and dads. We're community helpers, community heroes to rescue the people. Educator Bobo, what are some things that kids at home can do to practice staying safe around fire? So Joe, I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, kids, ask, ask your mother and father, say, mom, dad, let's have a practice fire drill. What they would do is push the smoke alarm, cut the lights off, 
and you practice finding your way out the house. Because trust me, kids, when that when you have, when there is a fire, smoke builds up much quicker than the fire, and you cannot see your hand in front of the face. So, ask mom and daddy, let's have a practice fire drill, okay? Just like you do at school. When you prepare at school, you're prepared at home also. Yes. I have loved being here. Thank you to Educator Kim, Educator Bobo, pleasure. the Fire Museum of Memphis. This has got to be one of the coolest places I've been. We think so. Thank you for coming by, Joel. Wow, that was the fire room. It, it, it helps you to know what it's like to be in a real fire. I saw all those flames and they were smoking. It was really hot in there. That was intense. was the fire maze, where you get really low and crawl around like you're in a real fire to find your safe place. I did it. <laughs> did you guys see my epic crawling skills? I think I found my passion. This museum is awesome. Check this out. Real firefighters coat. Oh, this thing's heavy. Whew. And a real helmet. When you come here, you get to dress like a real firefighter and fight fires. Well, pretend to fight fires. Come on, I'll show you. Haman tricked the king into signing a law that would get rid of all the Jews in the kingdom. Mordecai told Esther to go before the king and ask for help. Esther was scared because no one went before the king without permission. But if Esther didn't go before the king, all her people could soon be gone. She chose to be brave, trust God, and go to see the king, even without the king inviting her. The king held out his scepter as a sign of accepting Esther. Esther later went on to tell the king about Haman's plan. The king got rid of Haman and defeated Haman's plan. The Jews were saved. God is sovereign. He rescued his people through Esther's obedience. This wall behind me is dedicated to those who lost their lives in the line of duty, rescuing people from fires. You know, Esther could have lost her life when she came before the king uninvited. But Esther chose to trust God and God used Esther to rescue his people. Trusting in God's plan no matter what, that's what we discover when we dig into the book of Esther. I'm Joel and this is Explore the Bible on Location. How cool that Joel got to see first responders at the fire museum and see how they go about protecting you and me today. But guys, as we saw Queen Esther and her bravery and her courage, guys, her strength, her bravery, her courage, it all came from the Lord. And this week, our memory verse actually comes from Psalm 27, verse 1. So turn in your Bibles there and follow along. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I dread? 
Guys, I hope that you will take that verse this week. You will write it on your hearts, guys, because there is no one or nothing that can stop God's plan for your life. Guys, be bold. Be courageous. I love you. Let me pray for you. Father God, we love you so much. God, thank you for the inspiration of Queen Esther, God, and how you used her to save your people, God. You could use any one of these first kids to change the world. God, help us put our trust in you, Father. Help us turn our eyes to you day in and day out, God, that we are not looking into our own lives or pleasing others, God, but all we are looking for is living our life to glorifying you. God, that's not always easy, Lord, but give these kids the strength, the courage, and the boldness, even in these crazy times, to find ways to serve you, God. We love you so much. We thank you for your son, and it is in his name all God's children said, amen. Happy birthday, Benjamin. <laughs> hey, Becky. Hi, girl. What's happening? That, that's my crown. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. I, I think I think I'll be okay without it. I was just trying to get in the spirit of Queen Esther. It's fine. I I completely understand. Did you hear about our tea party? I did hear about your tea party, even though I wasn't invited. You were invited. You were invited. Oh, did I miss that text? That happens from time to time. I almost did too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you got the kid for the kids to do this week? Well, we miss seeing their faces so much. I know. I know. So we want to invite you guys to have your own tea parties. Fun! Or rescue missions. And with parent permission, please send us some pictures. Awesome! See you Wednesday night! Bye! Bye.